guys, Happy New Year! 2016 is finally upon us, and in the world of gaming, it seems very promising in terms of announcements, surprises, and yes, game releases. I have the games we know that are dropping this year, I've got a bunch of games that I'm so hyped for! But, these are the top 10 most anticipated games of 2016 that we do know of. So let's not beat around the bush any longer. Here it is, HMK's top 10 most anticipated games of 2016. Let's get into it with number 10. Number 10 is Street Fighter V, which is set to release in February for the PlayStation 4, Linux, and Microsoft Windows. And it's gonna have cross-play between the three systems, which is great! So you can't complain, it's like, oh yeah, I got Street Fighter V, but I only got it for PS4. Oh, I got Street Fighter V, but I got it for Windows. Looks like we can't play against her. No! No Johns, no excuses. Me and my friends were really big on Street Fighter, and I can't wait to play this new iteration. At E3 last year, I was able to play this game and it felt really good. I can't wait for Street Fighter V, and this comes from a guy who's tired from all the iterations of Street Fighter 4 we got. Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, Turbo something blah blah blah, Ultra Street Fighter 4, more games, more characters, more stuff. What I'm really hyped for for Street Fighter 5 is the new elements they're gonna add into the game series, including the new characters and the new abilities, including the V Trigger, V Reversal, and V Skills, which is all gonna be marked under the V Gauge. And I don't know why, but they decided to change Super Moves into Critical Arts. I, they could have just kept it super move, super attacks from the EX bar, but hey, you know, they want to call it Critical Arts, that's fine. And something that I'm super excited for is the fact that all the DLC characters, even though they got leaked already, all of the DLC characters that we'll be getting throughout 2016 have the ability to be free of charge. That means you don't have to pay for them, you can pay for them using in-game currency that you earn called FIGHT MONEY! I don't care how long it takes, I'm gonna get those DLC characters free, I'm not gonna pay one penny after I buy the game, holy shit. That really sits well with me. Capcom, you fucked up sometimes, but this, this was a good move. So that's why Street Fighter 5 gets number 10. What do you get when you fuse Pokemon with Tekken? You get Pokemon Tournament, which is going to be dropping on the Wii U sometime spring of this year. Man, I gotta say, the first thing, I like Tekken, I love Pokemon, and this game looks great. I, this is the first time we, we're seeing Pokemon in the truly HD versions of themselves. We see some Pokemon in Super Smash Bros., but they're all like, you know, they're smooth and clay-like and stuff. Yeah, but no, in this game, there you can see their furry, the, the bump mapping in their designs and stuff, and I'm just, oh. The graphics has me slain already, but the gameplay looks really good. It looks um, kind of a mix between Tekken and uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm. And I know a lot of people are like, holy shit, you're bringing Naruto in this? No, 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 no. Okay, let me stop right now. But Pokemon Tournament, Pokemon, Pokemon, whatever. Pokemon Tournament, uh, for the longest, as ever since we knew this game was a thing, we're like, why isn't this coming to the Wii U? It's only going to be for arcade in Japan. Only going to be arcade for Japan. And then we finally got the confirmation it's going to be released everywhere on the Wii U, and it's coming to North America, quarter two, spring, sometime in spring. And the fighters, I'm glad they didn't, like, you know, to just take a bunch of fighting type Pokemon and just put them in the game. We got Pikachu, Lucha Pikachu, Sceptile, Suicune, the fuck? Suicune, Blaziken, Charizard, Gengar, Gardevoir, and a lot more. And we're gonna get a new fighter soon. I think it's January 15th we're gonna get a reveal of a new fighter, so I'm really excited. And the super moves look crazy. I just really hope this game is gonna be as competitive as I want it to be and it's not gonna slip under the cracks like a lot of fighting games. <coughs> Justice. But I just love, I, I just, I, I'm really excited for this game. And that's why it gets number nine. Final Fantasy 15 gets number eight. This game was announced in 2006. Holy shit! Ten years later, we have confirmation that's gonna be releasing this year. Ten years. Ten fucking years. It originally got announced as Final Fantasy Versus 13 and was going to be part of the Nova Crystallis uh, compilation that was going to include uh, Final Fantasy type 
uh, Zero, uh, which was like Final Fantasy type of God of some shit, and Final Fantasy 13. But Jesus! Final Fantasy 15 is uh, primed and ready to release this year. And I really hope it does, because I've been looking forward to this game for the longest. The Final Fantasy has always been that type of RPG turn based, and each game has been trying to like mold out around, especially with Final Fantasy 13, which is weird. But Final Fantasy 15 seems to be more akin to an action RPG, Kingdom Hearts like. You know, it was originally directed by Tetsuya Nomura, but then he moved on to go finish Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake. And now we have Mr. Tabata taking over, and he said it's going to release sometime this year. We don't know when, but it's coming out this year. And the graphics fucking slay me. And I just I just can't wait to play this game. Uh, I've had my hands on the demo, and it seems pretty good so far. A lot of people had some complaints about Episode Dust Guy and stuff. But, you know, uh, I love exploring an open world scene especially with your friends and your pals and Noctis in his car oh joy I can't wait for this game and I want to see how Tetsuya Nomura because Tetsuya Nomura stated that Noctis is supposed to be the polar opposite to Sora one of my favorite video game characters and I want to see I want to see how that how that turns out you know we've been waiting for this game for a long ass time and it's almost finally time so that's why it gets number eight So, you want a game that's gonna kick your ass? Dark Souls 3, which is releasing in April! Worldwide, but for some weird reasons, released in Japan first. Ah, fine. Dark Souls, the Dark Souls series, the Demon Souls series, the Soul series. I love the Soul series. Every time I played, I just, I, it's that game you have to be very careful. It's that game where you cannot fuck up, cause you fuck up, you die, and you have no one but yourself to blame on that shit. And I love that. I'm like, call me a glen for punishment. That's what I love about the Dark Souls series. I'm a huge fan of Legend of Zelda and Dark Souls and Demon Souls kind of go along that same path. And it's just turned up to 11. And the lore of it is pretty cool. But one thing that I'm so excited for for Dark Souls 3 is that the combat and the movements are a, a lot faster than Dark Souls 2. And that, that's something I'm really excited for. You can backstep faster, you can dodge roll faster, you can attack faster. Oh my god, but apparently this game's still gonna kick your ass and I'm not fucking ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Dark Souls. Dark Souls 3. I'm so fucking ready. Number 6 is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Guys. I, you already know Zelda series is one. This is my favorite game. This is what am I saying? This game is supposedly going to drop for us in, the, in North America March 4th, 2016. So we have less than two months to go. And it's going to come with a Wolf Link Amiibo. And it's going to have changes. And it's going to be HD. And it's going to have uh, Amiibo support. And the Wolf Link Amiibo can transfer data to Zelda with you! We, are, we, we still don't know much about this game, that it's an HD remake, like we already know like it's the story the same, gameplay the same, blah 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 blah. Well, we'll just have to see what they're gonna do with this game. But if Majora's Mask 3D is any indicator, uh, they might just change the boss fights. And Twilight Princess's boss fights were just brain dead, and I really hope they change that. But all in all, Twilight Princess, it, it has been one of my favorite Zelda games, but I mean, I feel like uh, there's a lot that are better than Twilight Princess, and this is the chance for Nintendo to make this game amazing. Because in Wind Waker HD, which came out in 2013, it fixed all the original Wind Waker's problems. Twilight Princess had problems. Let's see if Twilight Prince HD can fix those problems. And you know, HD Wii U, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited for that shit. So that's why Twilight Prince HD gets number six. Number five is Star Fox Zero, the first Star Fox game to be released that is original not a remake in so many fucking years. It is set to drop this year in April, even though it was scheduled to release last year. Like another game we know. Nintendo! Okay. Star Fox Zero. I, 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 like, Star Fox Zero, I played it at E3. It looks great. It runs 60 frames per second. Beautiful graphics. Great gameplay. The gamepad integration is, is on point. And the R-Wing could transform into the Walker, which is a concept that they decided to revisit that was never, that never seen the light of day from Star Fox 2, 
way back in the day, and it, it, it works, it really works well, and, um, but the thing that kind of, like, you know, gets me out about this game is that Nintendo doesn't really want us to, like, want to tell us what it is. From what we know, it's a retelling of Star Fox 64, and they're like, it's not a retelling, it's not a remake, it's not a prequel, it's not a sequel. Then what the fuck is it? What is Star Fox Zero? From what I gather, it's a retelling of Star Fox 64. Um, just like they, they tell it in a different way, different enemies, different settings, um, something happens differently than what happened, what originally happened in Star Fox 64, but I'm really hyped for it and the graphics look on point, the voice acting is on point, they brought back all the old voice actors and I just really want to learn a little bit more about this game, um, multiplayer, please God, and uh, all in all, I'm so glad that Star Fox is finally coming back. And maybe this will tell Nintendo that we want other things to come back, like F-Zero, 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 please. Star Fox Zero F, holy shit. Banjo-Kazooie is one of my all-time favorite games of all time, of all time, of all time. And they fucked it all up with nuts and bolts. That is until Playtonic Games started a Kickstarter for a game called Ukulele, which will be released in October of this year. Ukulele acts as a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie, and I was so I was blown away from what they showed us. And I'm like, I gotta fund this now, and I funded it, and I'm gonna get it, and I'm gonna get it, and I'm gonna put a shit out of it. Oh Lord Almighty, yes God. It's coming out for the Wii U, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Linux, Microsoft Windows. Um, I don't know if I'm missing anything. I might be. I don't know. If, uh, like, whatever. But Ukulele seems to return to the old open world platformer genre that seems to be like forgotten by a lot of people except for Super Mario. And, ban dude, Banjo Kazooie was just one of those games that was way ahead of its time. And now to see that Ukulele seeks to take its place, I just cannot wait to see what they're gonna do with this and I am very confident in this team because these are a bunch of key figures from the rare days back in N64 era that worked on Banjo-Kazooie. So I, I really have nothing to worry about when it comes to ukulele and I just cannot wait until this game drops. Maybe it's gonna be playable at one point at PAX events or E3 and you know I'm gonna be there and put shit out of it. And so if you're hyped for ukulele, please tell me in the comment section below. But ukulele gets number four on my list. I, October cannot come soon enough. My number three most anticipated game of 2016 is No Man's Sky. Let me tell you a little something about myself, all right? Before I get into that, No Man's Sky has set this uh, drop sometime in June of 2016 and will release for the PlayStation 4 and Windows. But let me tell you a little something about myself, all right? I am a sucker. Let me let me try to paint a picture in your mind. I am a sucker for open universe exploration. I've had dreams as a child and up until now. And sometimes when I just lay on the grass and look into the sky, I have dreams of visiting planets of our world, seeing planets in the distance, having skies of blue, purple, green, orange, different colors from where our own world is. And No Man's Sky seems to be the epitome of that and will validate all those dreams of mine. No Man's Sky, it promises to put us in a universe that is shared by everyone that is ever expanding through an algorithm that they designed themselves. It's gonna have more than two billion planets to explore. And if you find the planet before anyone else online, you get to name that planet. And it could say, oh, this planet, you name it, and it's discovered by this person's gamer tag. And I'm like, dude, y'all dude, don't fuck with me, man. You can explore planets, and it's it's all seamless from what they say. You can go straight to the planet from outer space. You don't have to like, oh, here's the planet, select the planet, go to planet, and like cut the cutscene or like loading screen or whatever. No, you dive into that sucker, you land and you explore it. Alright? This I really hope this game doesn't suck because it seems way too fucking good to be true. But if it turns out well, I just you, you're not gonna sing it for months, man. Oh my god, almighty! Oh I just cannot wait for this game. You can go to planets, research plants, gain material to like uh, 
uh, fix your ship, fix your armor. So if you go to like a different galaxy and you see that shit is way too harsh, okay, now let's not go here, explore a different galaxy. Okay, now I can build up my armor and build up my ship. Now I can explore that galaxy and that galaxy and this galaxy. Everyone gets a galaxy. No Man's Sky. I, I was just gushing about that shit. I cannot wait to see if this game is good or not. June, I really hope this game doesn't suck. No Man's Sky gets number three on my list. Number two is Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. This game is supposedly going to be the last game before Kingdom Hearts 3. And if it's released in this year, Kingdom Hearts 3 may release next year, 2017. That's one reason why I'm hyped for this game. Another reason is that it's gonna have two, two, Never before seen brand new works in the Kingdom Hearts series. Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 had uh, three iterations of Kingdom Hearts that we all knew of that was HDified and brought into either a game or cutscenes. Kingdom Hearts 2.8, the only thing that we know, the only thing that we've seen before is Dream Drop Distance HD made for the PlayStation 4. So that's an interesting thing to be hyped for in its own. But we're going to get Kingdom Hearts. 0.2 Burp by Sleep, a fragmentary passage, which a lot of people believe to be the revival of Burp by Sleep Volume 2 that was eluded in Burp by Sleep Final Mix a couple of years back. And we're also gonna get the HD Kingdom Hearts key back cover theatrical length movie that will explain the plight of the foretellers during the events of Kingdom Hearts Key, which is before the Keyblade War. These two prospects got me really hyped because as a theorist, as someone who loves Kingdom Hearts, I love to get new information just to like rip into and see what we can learn, see what we can theorize, see what we can think about the future of Kingdom Hearts. Or in this case, the past. And Kingdom Hearts 0.2 and Kingdom Hearts Key back cover will use technology and will be made in the Unreal Engine utilizing Kingdom Hearts 3's Kingdom Shader in order to show us what they can do. And this is the first time we're gonna see it. This is the first, technically the first next gen Kingdom Hearts game. 0 0.2 and back cover. Well, back cover's not really a game, but 0 0.2. And I cannot wait to see what we have in store for this. And if this game plays as good as we, we hope, then Kingdom Hearts 3, the hype will be too real once again. So Kingdom Hearts 2.8, final chapter prologue gets number two. Before we get into number one, let's talk about some honorable mentions. Mighty number nine. I like Mega Man. Hyrule Warriors Legends. I like Zelda. Pokemon Go. I like Pokemon. Horizon Zero Dawn. The game just looks really fucking cool. My number one most anticipated game. 2016, or I should say, of all time, is The Legend of Zelda for Wii U. I know you guys saw this coming from a mile away, but I don't care! This game is supposed to release this year. Lord Almighty. This game was supposed to release last year, but this game is going to release this year. They confirmed that back in November, and now... It's 2016. The Zelda 30th anniversary is this year. We got Twilight Prince HD with a Wolf Link Amiibo that will transfer data from that game over to Zelda Wii U. I really don't know what it is, but I want to know what it is now. We don't have a concise release date. We just know it releases 2016. We don't have a name. We don't have a direction of where this game's going. All we know is that this game is going to be Nintendo's interpretation of open world exploration, which has me hyped in its own right, and that's going to break down conventions of Zelda just like A Link Between Worlds did. And I love that game, so I can't wait to see what they mean and what they're going to do with Zelda with you. The three Trailers are not even like official trailers, they're more like teasers or spots or anything like that. We had a teaser in E3 20, uh, 2014, we had gameplay teaser at Video Game Awards last year, no, 2014 Video Game Awards, and we had another teaser at the Nintendo Direct that happened in November. So I really want to know more about this game. We're probably going to have to wait until maybe an Nintendo Direct that's happening in February or until E3. I know they're going to blow the lid off this game at E3, but... The majesty that this game commands just beckons me 
to want this game even more. Like, this game seems to be too fucking serious, alright? You can go out to anywhere you see in the trailers. They're saying like, oh, anywhere you can see, you can go. The map, what we've seen, is huge. The enemies are fucking crazy. Lasers, fucking phasers. And we have the return of the horseback exploration with Link being able to slow down time in some instances in like a bullet time mode where he uses his bow and arrow to like pinpoint where he should shoot an enemy. There's just so much of this game we don't know about, and what we do know just gets me hyped out of my mind. Alright? I cannot wait for this game. I cannot wait for information about this game. I cannot wait to stop calling this game Zelda with you for Christ's sakes! Jesus! Zelda Wii U, my most anticipated game of 2016. Don't delay this again, please, Nintendo, please don't. I'm hyped for this game, and I know a bunch of you guys are still hyped for this game. And that's why it gets number one. So guys, what do you think about HMK's top 10 most anticipated games of 2016? What are you hyped for this year? Please leave your anticipated games in the comment section below. And until the next listen, until whenever these games come out, because I'll be covering them, because I have anticipated for them. I've been HMK, and I'll check you guys later.